it's time YouTube in today's video I'm gonna be showcasing my entire Yu-Gi-Oh cards collection Yu-Gi-Oh card collection whatever you prefer anyways in this video I'll be showcasing cards that I've been picking up periodically over the last you could say 18 years mostly over the last five years but uh, there's a nice mix of cards from the original Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh GX and Yu-Gi-Oh 5Ds even a little bit of the fourth series Yu-Gi-Oh's Excel in there so should be a lot of fun hope you guys enjoy so without further ado let's get going we're gonna start it off here with uh, some newer cards but still kinda old because they are the promos for Duelist Kingdom starting with Set Sail for the Kingdom got a 9 here I, I graded these all in order hoping to get them all in 10 Thought it'd be pretty cool. And Glory of the King's Hand, the only one that did get a hand, uh, hand uh, a 10. And Duelist Kingdom. You'll notice those from the original anime, the cards they gave to uh, all the protagonists, I believe, uh, to get into Duelist Kingdom. I don't know, maybe I'm remembering that wrong right now. But there you go. And you'll notice stuff like this. Um, these are, again, 2015 promos, but they kind of fit in with uh, the older stuff, which we're going to be starting with here. So, that being said, you're going to see some of that stuff coming up. If that offends you, I'm sorry. Without further ado, we're going to take a trip down memory lane. Check this out. Starting out with a Blue Eyes evolutionary line. Yeah, you're going to see a little bit of uh, camera adjustments. And again, we're going to start off with uh, a kind of a newer set, a reprint set. But one of the sets that started me off in this whole collecting journey, Duelist Pack Kaiba. Kicking it off with the super rare... White Stone of Legends from Duelist Pack Kaiba, uh, first edition, and also our super rare reprint of the Blue Eyes White Dragon. That's another thing. The reprints in this set, uh, Duelist Pack Kaiba, that they did it right. They made a different version of Blue Eyes. Had an awesome super rare White Stamp Stone of Legend. I believe that was the first hollow print of it, and uh, of course, ultimate rare Chaos Emperor Dragon. I loved how they did it. Uh, Unfortunately, it seems like they just fell off. Again, no ultimate rares being printed. Kind of hurts it. But starting it off, of course, paired up with our SDK Blue Eyes. And these guys right here are actually the first two, pretty much the first two Yu-Gi-Oh cards I ever bought. Malamo and Papamo, I believe, bought them for me. I think I probably had to convince one to buy one for me and then one to buy the other because they are like, why? I think both of them would say, why the hell would you want to buy two of the same thing? But you'll see that... Uh, that would have, uh, per I would have prevailed if I did that in the future. So, uh, meaning just like, yeah, collecting two of each card or three of each card definitely would have been uh, a great idea back in the day. Some more Duelist Pack Kaiba stuff. Again, all of these three Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragons pulled by myself from Duelist Pack Kaibas. And I had no idea how rare Duelist Pack Kaiba was going to get. Again, I, th I just thought it was a reprint set. I think I found them in 2013 or 15 or something like that, and uh, I, I realized they're only a few years old, so I had no idea how popular they were going to become, but an absolutely unreal this set to start it off. Again, the Blue Eyes Evolutionary line to kick us off. And uh, yes, you are going to see some camera adjustments, just because, again, don't want to show off each page in all its glory. You know, give it that full uh, appreciation. So continuing on with some awesome Blue Eyes cards here. Let's zoom in again. We have another Duelist Pack Kaiba. First edition, Dragon Master Knight. Burst Stream of Destruction. Basically the uh, Blue Eyes attack card. And Dragon Master Knight, very fitting to go along, of course, with the original Blue Eyes from LOB. Can't forget about that. Not in the best of condition, but still one of my favorite cards. I only recently picked that up. And, of course, a Paladin of White Dragon. I actually picked that up off Troll and Toad, and uh, it's actually in pretty good condition, too. Might even get, like, a PSA 9. But, yes, very fitting to have Dragon Master Knight on this page with his buddy, Black Luster Soldier, because there's some uh, Yugi cards coming up, as you can see. Here we go, kicking it off with some Yugi cards. Of course, you have your original L.O.B. Dark Magician. This uh, binder is kind of dirty, unfortunately, so I'm going to take it out here to show it to you. And I believe, again, I do believe this is an original print. It's not in the best of condition, though. I find that with some of the older cards here. It was either, like, Pack Fresh pulled myself, or not in the greatest of condition. So, and, of course, you have the original SDK, or sorry, SDY. A little bit of foil bleed on that, too. And this one, again, one of the originals that, uh, 
Mama Mo and Papa Mo picked up for me. Probably Mama Mo. It's a little bit easier to uh, convince her. We also have a first edition Buster Blader from PSV. Uh, this one, again, one of the cards that I pulled and I've had ever since 02 or whenever it came out, 03, 04, I can't remember when PSV came out. Just really nice to be able to keep that one throughout all of these years. And continuing on, obviously, if we have Dark Magician with Buster Blader, we're going to have Dark Palette in there. And of course, we have both versions. So, here, if you didn't know, Dark Paladin came in uh, MFC, and it was supposed to be printed like that. That was the artwork that it was supposed to have, but people were pulling it like this. <laughs> it came with, I guess, the pro it was a promo artwork, and so you had to actually send it in to Konami. You, you had to mail it in, and they would send you the corrected art version of, uh, of Dark Paladin. So, with that being said, I think the first edition corrected art is a little bit more rare. Um, I'm not too sure. Uh, as you can see, I only have the Unlim here, but uh, still very beautiful cards. Very, very cool. How uh, one of the first, uh, one of the first misprints, if I, if I'm not mistaken, right? But of course, we also have DMG, the original waifu, and this girl. Actually, one of the first cards that I picked up when I uh, wanted to pick up some cards that I, I just I missed out on when I was younger. I never pulled them. Dark Magician Girl, one of those elusive cards. And uh, finally, finally picked it up. I actually paid about $25 Canadian for this. I think that was only about five or six years ago or something like that now. So very, very happy to pick that up. And of course, continuing on with some more Yugi cards. I have the Fierce Knight from LOB. Curse of Dragon along with Gaia the Dragon Champion. First edition from LOB. I actually found this at a local shop. Again, not in the greatest of condition, but First edition LOB, $5 Canadian, and not too long ago too, so pretty cool pickup right there. That does it for uh, our Yugi Kaiba page. Can't, sorry, I can't really get the glare off of it for the entire showcase there. But continuing on, some more iconic Yugi cards and Joey cards. Of course, Joey Wheeler had to get his, uh, his own section here. That's another thing too. I was really having a hard time like getting the lighting for the binder, so I don't know really how great this is going to be. Also, this is one of my older binders, so as you can tell, a little bit dirty. For everything coming up, I did put it in newer binders, so we won't have that problem, but uh, just bear with me here for a minute. <laughs> we'll get through this. This is the old one. It's authentic, right? Adds that authenticity to it. <laughs> but some more awesome Yugi cards. Skilled Dark Magician, Mirage Knight, and Dark Flare Knight. Dark Flare Knight Obviously, he goes really well here along with Summon Skull because we have a Joey page coming up. But we're going to get right to that. A couple more Yugi cards here. Breaker, the Magical Warrior, that awesome episode where he just went off on, uh, was it Weevil? Where he just like overkilled him, just keeps attacking him. Skilled White Magician, along with Skilled Dark Magician, of course. For, uh, some of these, you can tell, obviously, most of them on limb, first editions, all over the place. But uh, yeah, some of them first edition, some of them on limb. Um, it's back in the day when I was collecting I really didn't care I actually kind of preferred to get the unlim if uh, if if it was cheaper if it was a lot cheaper if the first edition had already raised in price too much so yeah but continuing on with some more Yugi cards I'm not sure how much of the video I was blocking my face <laughs> I don't know like I said I'm probably gonna have to record this like 10 times before I actually get it out but here we go first attempt black magic ritual and magician of black chaos Two more iconic Yugi cards. I'm kind of surprised those weren't printed anywhere other than PP, um, big PP. Anyways, <laughs> Dark Sage uh, from DB1. This guy, pretty cool. Again, put him right there beside Time Wizard because you all know that little episode where uh, Yugi just always gets the one up on Joey and he uses Time Wizard's effect and wins with Dark Magician on the field and Dark Magician just gets even stronger turns into Dark Sage. So, very fitting to put those guys beside each other, as well as Red Eyes a Bee Dragon. Look at all this friggin' lint. It's like lint just gets attracted to this material, I swear. <laughs> but Red Eyes Bee Dragon, along with Summon Skull and Black Skull Dragon, the fusion of Joey Wheeler and another fusion of Joey Wheeler and Yugi, along with Dark Flare Knight up there, of course, and Flame Swordsman. And of course, we have the Inferno Fire Blast, your Joey Wheeler uh, attack, sorry, your uh, Red Eyes Black Dragon attack card 
Uh, that does come in Ultimate Rare. That's from that was printed in SOD pretty late, but uh, I never picked it up just because I felt like it never fit in with the other ones. Right, the other ones are all Ultra Rare, right? So maybe it was just me being cheap. That's probably exactly what it was. Old Yu-Gi-Oh being cheap, along with of course Amplifier, the old Jinzo Equip card, beautiful Lord of D. Um, I think I just really kind of ran out of space for him, but of course we have. Uh, Jinzo and Thousand Dragon. Oh yeah, Thousand Dragon. I almost forgot to mention him. Beside Time Wizard, of course, the uh, the original uh, Baby Dragon turning into Time uh, turning into Thousand Dragon. But here we go. Of course, the most iconic Wheeler card. Not sure why I don't have that in the middle. Maybe like up top. I don't know. Anywho, maybe we'll have to uh, update the binder after the video. But Jinzo and this guy right here. Unfortunately, it's pretty beat up. Uh, but I did find it back in the day, and it is a PSVEN Jinzo. So, there are some collectors that do, uh, I forget, I believe that was Master Collection 1, if I'm not mistaken, the gold one that they came in. Uh, I might be mistaken, but yeah, so the, uh, there are collectors that go after those EN cards. And uh, there are, I do have some more upcoming, uh, hopefully I don't miss them. Here we go, the entire Wheeler section. Sorry again for the glare, that's the best I'm going to do. Moving on. With our next section, some more awesome Yugi cards. Here we venture into the realm of level monsters. You know all about the level monsters that Yugi started messing with towards the uh, the last couple arcs of the series. Hold on, let's adjust here for you. Kicking it off with Mystic Swordsman Level Two Ultimate Rare from SOD. I actually picked up this guy from my guy 416. I believe he was graded as a seven, and I cracked it. Or no, sorry, was that Silent Swordsman? One of the two, I can't remember. But Mystic Swordsman level two, Mystic Swordsman level four, and of course, Mystic Swordsman level six. Some awesome cards. Um, I know I picked up some, I'm trying to give everybody shout outs, but it's really hard to remember everybody uh, where who I got the cards from. Uh, I know I, like, I have it listed down somewhere, but I really can't remember right now. But I'll, thanks to all, the, all you guys on IG. Again, if, you don't, if you're not on uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Instagram, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Instagram community is awesome. Make sure you check it out. That's uh, kind of where I got most of these cards. Make sure you check them out if you're interested in picking up some awesome cards, because that's where you find the good stuff. Silent Swordsman, level 3. And by that, I mean, like, make a Yu-Gi-Oh! account, follow other Yu-Gi-Oh! accounts, and, uh, yeah, just, like, yeah, just keep an eye out for the guys who uh, who post the good stuff. You'll see some some really awesome stuff go up for sale on Instagram. And I say that because I know a lot of people don't realize that. I didn't realize that for the first few years of my collecting. But Silent Swordsman Level 3, a ultimate rare from RDS, Silent Swordsman Level 5, and another ultimate rare. But then we have Silent Swordsman Level 7. I had to get it because it's a Silent Swordsman, but from, what is WCS? I don't even know what that is. World Championship something? Anywho, Silent Swordsman level 7, and that comes in Ultra Rare. Why, why do they do that? More Silent guys, Silent Magician though, and si uh, Silent Magician level 4 and level 8. I actually thought that was a dude, but I'm pretty sure it's a girl after seeing Silent Magician, the uh, completed version, and uh, all her boobies. <laughs> Anywho. Breaker, the Magical Warrior. Uh, this one's from DB1. Yeah, I f figured I just have to shoehorn that guy in there. But here we go, some more iconic Yugi cards. Starting off with this Celtic Guardian. Again, one that I have had for, like, since 2002. And I took a look at this one, and I would say PSA 9 quality at least. Maybe even a 10. It's really, really nice. And I would say it's the glossy version. I don't even really want to take it out right now. I believe it's the glossy version. Doesn't look very wavy to me. Again, I'm not not really well versed with the uh, the old stuff, so pardon. Continue on though with some more awesome iconic Yugi cards: Catapult, Turtle, and Mystical Elf, and Marshmallow, Karibo, of course. Man Eater Bug. I just have to throw him in there because he was an iconic, just a card. Obviously, everybody used back in the day. We're starting to get into uh, mix it up a little bit more. Like I didn't have room for Gear Freed. Obviously, he kind of belong on the. Uh, on the Joey page, but he's a super rare, so I stuck him in over here. Again, another first edition from PSV, and uh, first edition Levia Dragon Daedalus. Actually, didn't realize this card was like, printed in uh, the original series until recently, but first edition, another one I found for about five dollars at a locals, 
and Injection Fairy Lily. This one, a Unlimb, but I do believe that's in pretty good condition as well. So there we have it, some more iconic Yugi cards. Get a nice shot of all of these without the glare. Apologies, it is pretty tough to get full binder shots with without glare, but awesome page nonetheless, some awesome iconic Yugi, Yugi cards. And uh, yeah, really excited to get that Celtic Guardian first edition from LOB graded. Alrighty, on to our next page here. And uh, here we have some pretty interesting stuff. The fusion monsters, kind of like original fusions that uh, required one or two specific uh, specific monsters. So starting off with the original X Y Z monsters, Bailey. Bailey, be quiet. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? What? What are you doing? Here, here she going messing up my bed. What are you doing, Bailey? Thank you. Thank you for that. You ruined it. <laughs> hey, Lily. Alright, hopefully I can find a nice angle here to start it off. But, of course, starting off with the original XYZ monsters, you wonder why people started calling Xyz monsters XYZ when uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal first came out. But here's your culprit. So, starting off with, of course, actually, the originals, the original super rares from MFC first edition, X head cannon, Y dragon head, and X or sorry, and Z metal tank, alphabet guys, A plus for alphabet. But we also have some other super rares up here from MFC: Y Z tank dragon, X Z tank cannon, and the reprint here. This is not from MFC. This is from Duelist Pat Kaiba again. X Y Z dragon cannon. But also the ultra rares, of course, and. The little out of place ultimate rare VW XYZ Dragon Catapult Cannon. This guy, out of place, I say that because, as I mentioned before, have uh, some cards that just fit with other series. This one being from Yu Gi Oh! GX, but just fits well with the uh, the originals here. So I think a Chaz, if I'm not mistaken, uh, summon that guy in Yu Gi Oh! GX. Also have XY Dragon Cannon from first, first, another first edition from MFC. These were some of the. Uh, the only ones that I was able to pick up all in first edition because they were really, really cheap. And even right now, I don't think they're uh, properly valued, to tell you the truth. They're probably definitely undervalued. Also have the original XYZ Dragon Cannon from MFC. Pretty cool. Old, old school slash newer Kaiba cards because he uh, used those later on in his uh, career, in the Dual Monsters career. But here we go, some more awesome fusion cards. Starting off with just the super rares, they're kind of all over the place. But Ryu Senshi, Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon, everybody obviously knows about Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon. Dark Bolter the Terrible, that one's a first edition from LOD. And Fiend Skull Dragon, another first edition card. Um, the bottom there, just on limbs. But we have some more awesome fusion cards that require like two specific monsters. This one again, printed a little bit later, but has some of the OG cards. Lord of D and Divine Dragon Ragnarok. I actually didn't know what that card was. I had to look it up. But there's that awesome fusion of him. That would just be an awesome Lord of D, you know? Like, doesn't that look really cool? I think it's a pretty underrated card. I think it's around $100. I actually have one for sale. So that's one of the cards uh, I do have for sale. If you guys are interested, hit me up. But of course, we also have Barrel Dragon, Blowback Dragon, and Gatling Dragon. Another one from FET. FET, uh, some underrated ultimate rares in that set, I swear. And uh, some more first edition cards here. The Blowback Dragon from AST, and this Barrel Dragon is actually one that uh, I've had uh, pulled again since uh, since way back, since OG Young Yugi Mo pulled that. Had it, uh, and it's in pretty decent condition too. But uh, I don't think it's like gradable, probably a cassette. Also though, Dark Blade, the Dragon Knight. When I first saw this card, I was like, oh cool. Fusion of Dark Blade and Pitch Dark Dragon. It just looks awesome together. Alrighty, folks, on to the next page. I'm gonna try to speed it up a little bit here. Again, don't have the face cam going, just because, um, yeah, you're not really gonna be able to see anything. I figured that would streamline the process a little bit. But here we go, starting off. But here we go, kicking off the tune page. It's almost like a page and a half here. Starting with, of course, our super rares, tuned Goblin Attack Force. Toon Gemini Elf and their non tuned counterparts. Thought that was pretty cool to uh, match them up here. Cannon Soldier, this is actually a super rare from DB2. 
along with Toon Cannon Soldier. This is actually from, from TP6. I think this is actually a pretty decent card now. Uh, when I picked it up, it was probably like 80 bucks or something like that, or 70 bucks. Pretty, pretty hefty, Canadian. Pretty hefty, but definitely not what it's worth now. It's definitely gone up a little bit more since then. Uh, Toon Summon Skull. Here we have some of the best Toon monsters. Toon Summon Skull, Toon Dark Magician Girl. This is a jump promo. And Blue Eyes Toon Dragon. This is an unlimited, but it is the original unlimited MRL. So before they switched over to Spell Ruler. And of course, Toon Mermaid. But we also mixed in some of the newer stuff, Comic Hand and Toon Kingdom. Some of the first, the first time these uh, these iconic Toon cards were printed. So I had to throw those in there, along with, of course, some more Pegasus card thousand Pegasus cards, <laughs> thousand eyes restrict from PSV and from DB1, and also relinquished from starter Des deck Pegasus. Uh, threw in just some other random ritual and uh, fusion monsters that just kind of. Go, go go well here. Last Warrior from another planet. First edition from LON. I love that card. Always wanted to pick that guy up. A Mass Beast. This is actually one of the cards. This is actually a Euro print as well, but they're not worth as much as the NA prints, unfortunately. I think they were printed a little bit more, but nonetheless, pretty awesome. This is one of the cards that uh, me and my buddy, uh, we swapped and we, uh, we couldn't figure out whose was whose. So yeah, I had to pick this one up for myself. But along with Dark Master Zork, another iconic ritual monster from the OG Yu-Gi-Oh! And continuing it on, we have some more iconic OG cards here. Uh, some I couldn't really find a place for. Kicking it off with some awesome secrets and uh, oh, a little ultra rare there to mention. First edition Hellapalmer from Pharaonic Guardian. Uh, picked that one up again, probably for around $5 at a local shop. Absolutely awesome pickup. Lava Golem, again, another Pharaonic Guardian card, and Garnicia Alephantes, one of the uh, awesome vanillas. But, of course, the main gem of the page, as you all see, this beautiful first edition Yada Garasu with that awesome foil bleed, as they all usually do, that bloody bed, beautiful card, uh, along with Merzera Deville and End of Anubis, first edition from AST. Those cards actually were really underrated for the longest time, even still. Any first edition secret from the original sets, they're, they're, there's a lot of them that like aren't really very iconic, but um, don't really hold a lot of nostalgic value maybe to some people, but still, nonetheless, first edition print of the original cards. But, kicking it off with some more evil cards here, well, Ghost Knight of Jackal, another AST first edition ultra rare, but Dark Ruler Hades, first edition from LOD and Dark Necrofear, this Dark Necrofear, I believe, is actually Asian English. You're, you're able to tell if you look at the, uh, like the printing is, is a lot different, the card print. So yeah, Asian English here. Let's see, actually, I'll take it out and show you. There it is, Asian English. Again, those really aren't worth as much as the, uh, the, the North American prints. Nonetheless, very cool. But we have some more cards from DDS, Siaru. Siaru? See, I never knew how to say that card. <laughs> but of end the Luster Dragon. So, we have uh, the original Luster Dragon right here, for first edition from MFC, and Luster Dragon number two. As you can see though, it doesn't say Luster Dragon number two. Very, very common misprint that uh, it was just printed with just saying Luster Dragon. Just one of the many misprints in Yu-Gi-Oh! You'll see some more coming up later in the video. So, continuing on with some awesome secret rares. This is a first edition first edition. This is a tri-horned dragon from LOB, and there's some freaking dirt in here. This one is just the, uh, I believe it's just like an original unlim, but this guy right here, LOB EN. So very pr pretty cool. Uh, I spoke recently about those EN cards where they came from the Master Collection. So yeah, pretty cool. Have, uh, I actually didn't notice that when I first picked them up. We have a Serpent Knight Dragon. This is from SRL, so it is the reprint, uh, but we also have Sangan. Cyber Harpy Lady and a Legendary Fisherman. Legendary Fisherman, first ed from PSV. Dark Legends 1, Cyber Harpy Lady. And Sangan, this guy's actually from Turbo Pack 6. But again, I just felt that he kind of went with these guys. So just have to throw him in there. And moving on to some more iconic OG Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Kicking it off with the Egyptian Gods. These guys are just from the Legendary Collection. Uh, yeah, I just wanted some legendary collection ones in here just kind of like as placeholders i never really picked up the gbs or anything like that uh, i do have one of the gbs so stay tuned later for that but also invader of darkness 
the uh, Forgotten IOC Secret Rare. Still, first edition Secret Rare, not in the greatest condition, but an amazing card. Nonetheless, the Ultra Rares from the McDonald's packs, Millennium Shield and Cosmo Queen, absolutely love those guys. But we also have a Sangha of Thunder, Kazi Jin, and Sui Jin. Of course, your pieces for Gate Guardian. Insert a Ruxin, what is this? Actually didn't know that soundbite was from that for <laughs> until, he, uh, until he mentioned it. But of course, you have to have the OG, the iconic Exodia, the Forbidden One, along with uh, Exodia Necros there for his crotch. But these, uh, the printing is kind of all over the place. Some of them are like original Unlim print, some of them are Master Collection print, but uh, there is no like 2014 reprints in there. But of course, if we have the original Exodia, we have to pick up the Lost Art version. And uh, if you didn't notice, Lost Art just came with like this star in the background. I'm not even sure why, I guess that was considered a religious symbol, I'm not sure really why, but uh, yeah, ultimate. Exodia is the ultimate Forbidden Lord, again, just like a full version of him. And some more Lost Arts here, Larts, Call of the Haunted, and Skill Drain, pretty cool cards. And I do have some more Lost Art cards that I will actually get to right now, uh, as after I show these ones off. Legendary Fisherman, Lesser, Lesser Fiend, Tragedy, Super Rejuvenation, Along with uh, just some random Joey cards, here is a Spanish first edition LDD. It's a uh, it's L O B, but uh, in Spanish. And Flame Swordsman and Alligator Sword Dragon. This one is a rare from Turbo Pack Eight. Actually, a pretty valuable rare. Honorable mention to uh, some of the other Lost Art cards that I picked up. Again, they kind of go here, being Sibi Sibi, being Harpy cards. So yeah, figured throw them in here. Harpy's Feather Rest. Alluring Mirror Split, Harpy Queen, look at that, almost nakey, couple of her, Harpy Channeler, and Harpy Conductor, uh, and then along with another Legendary Fisherman, and one of the most epic Lost Arts ever produced, Dark Magician Girl, check that out, had to show her off, again, she goes with the other OGs, and figured also, show off the dual terminal, Dark Magician Girl here, couple of the different artworks here we'll actually flip back to that original page here we go we got the lost art dual terminal and of course the original mfc artwork beautiful dark magician girls moving on to some iconic spell cards starting off with polymerization from lob diffusion first edition from lon and a first edition duelist pack yugi alternate art polymerization Fusion Monsters added a ton to the game, of course, and I think paved the way for stuff like Synchro Monsters, etc. But moving on to some Ultra Rares, uh, actually, and a Super Rare here. First Edition Graceful Charity from Starter Deck Pegasus, but Ultra Rare Change of Heart and Premature Burial, along with Swords of Revealing Light from LOB. Again, probably one of the ones that I've had ever since I was a, a youngin'. Mystical Space Typhoon, First Edition. This one's actually kind of beat up, but I believe I picked it up for like 15 bucks or something like that. And a Heavy Storm from MRD. Some awesome MFC first edition cards here. First edition ultra rare double spell and diffusion wave motion. And again, one of those original you old school Yu-Gi-Oh Regekis. I also have this uh, creature swap and I kind of just noticed that it looks like the name shifted down a little bit. So that's kind of interesting. It is kind of beat up, but nonetheless a pretty awesome card. Uh, a random dark hole in here obviously just dusty as heck. I don't know how these things just collect dust so easily. Random Dark Hole in here, Ultra Rare from Turbo Pack 5, and uh, again, I just threw this in here because I believe I actually traded my, or sold my original Dark Hole from LLB, so unfortunately, don't have my original Super Rare upgraded to the Ultra, but we do have an original Ultra Rare Monster Reborn, which is pretty cool from LLB. Some more awesome Ultras, Forceful Sentry, first edition from MRL, Question from Veronic Guardian, and United We Stand. More awesome spell cards, awesome Unity. Have to have your Shonen Jump Unity card. I believe there's another one with Yugi's artwork that I didn't get, it was, it was a trap card. Have to pick that one up soon. More awesome OG iconic cards, Scapegoat, Card Destruction, Painful Choice, another creature swap there. Cost Down, a super rare Monster Reborn, and that is from Dark Legends, Noblemen of Crossout, and Graceful Charity. At the end, you might see some doubles like that, 
But move to, right now, we're moving on to some trap cards. Absolutely love the look of this page. Starting it off with some iconic Kaiba cards. Check it out. Deck Devastation Virus, Ring of Destruction, and Crush Card Virus. First edition, all of them. A couple of them from Duelist Pack Kyber and Kyber. And Deck Devastation Virus, again, another awesome card from Flaming Eternity. Moving on to some ultra, some more awesome ultra rares. Spellbinding Circle from MRL. And this one, if you actually see the code there, it's a little shifted down. Kind of another little misprint. But, of course, you have your Mirror Force, one of the most iconic cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! And your opposing Dark Mirror Force. And this is actually an EN Dark Mirror Force. Some Magic cards here. Magic Cylinder from LON. Magic Jammer from MRD. And Magical Hats from PSV. Along with another random Yu-Gi-Oh! GX kind of have him in here. Because, of course, Metal Reflect Slime was used to copy Obelisk. And that made the, uh, the new card that was printed God Slime. Another awesome Ultimate Rare. Had to throw in here, just again, fit with the traps. Divine Wrath and Torrential Tribute. This is from DB1. Moving on to some Judgment cards. I actually didn't even realize I had those in that order. I could put Imperial Order and Solomon Judgment. Solomon? Solemn Judgment beside each other, just because, I don't know, they, those two grandpas look like they should be chilling together. And then uh, Judgment of Anubis, I just put it there just because it was a secret rare. And uh, an OG one at that. And uh, yeah, kind of goes with it. Both, they're all, they all look like they're judging you. All judgy cards there. But here we have uh, some more Call of the Haunted variants. Three different ones here. So this first one is actually from Hobby League. But I think the Hobby League foil was like, I don't know if it was like peeled off or if it, if it like got rubbed off or something. But uh, yeah, it's not there anymore. Here we go. Got a nice new sleeve for it, even though the binder is still kind of dirty. I don't know why I have some of these old random sleeves in there. That one looked like it was black, but it looked like it was a clear sleeve, I guess, just because of the background. Anywho, nonetheless, on to the next page here. Some more trap cards. Uh, Metal Morph, just one that I used, like, I don't know, I use that all the time. I just felt that, like that was such a broken card. And Kunai with Chain, two awesome trap cards that are basically like equip cards. Moving on to, some again, some cards that were printed a little bit later. Here we have the Legendary Dragon Arc, or Waking the Dragon Arc. Starting off with Doom Virus Dragon, Mirror Force Dragon, uh, a, the reprint of Amulet Dragon, there is a secret rare of that. The Claw of Hermos, the Eye of Tamias, again, another reprint uh, that did come out in the original Dark uh, Dragons of Legend, I believe, in secret rare. I need to get that in secret rare, because as you can see, we have the Fang of Critias here, and uh, the originals, the uh, Joey, Legendary Knight Hermos, Tamias, the Knight of Destiny, the uh, Yugi there, and Legendary Knight Critias, representing Kaiba, so definitely need to upgrade those guys to secret rares soon just to get those all in the highest rarity uh, again some of the newer cards that were printed but those are like original og cards so i feel like they don't get the respect they deserve yet uh, and yeah had to throw them in here with these ones some more awesome ultimate rare spell cards that kind of just go with the og guys serial spell spiral spear strike got Gaia's attack there pretty much and ectoplasma Along with uh, Wonder Wand, I know this is pretty much just like a generic spellcaster card, but definitely helped out Dark Magician decks when it came out. And another Duelist Pack Kaiba card here, Pot of Greed, Ultimate Rare, and Pot of Avarice, along with Pot of Duality. When uh, you ask to stop the dispensary, and Mom says we have Pot at Home, but this is the Pot at Home. <laughs> I had to do that, a little 18, 18 plus joke there for you guys. Again, some out of place cards here. Just felt like these these guys had to go together. Pot of Greed, of course, one of the most iconic Yu-Gi-Oh cards ever produced. Not sure what it does though. You guys know? Let me know in the comments if you guys can figure it out. It's a pretty tough card to uh, understand. <laughs> Anywho, continuing on, some more awesome cards here. Invader of Darkness. This is just from the reprint packs. Uh, a Cyber, or sorry, a Harpy Lady Sisters and Fiend Mega Cyber again. Another reprint, ultra rare pull there. You can definitely tell. It almost looks like fake. The, uh, the foiling there. We're now getting to the official part of the binder where this stuff's for sale, guys. Anything you see two of or three of in, in this section, it is for sale. So three awesome Lava Golems, first edition secret rares from Pharaonic Guardian, Guy of the Dragon Champion. These guys are reprints. Uh, they are from the reprint uh, Legendary Collection. Same with this Monster Reborn, but still some awesome iconic OG Yu-Gi-Oh cards reprinted. Another Ghost Knight of Jackal, first edition from AST. 
and a unlimited blowback dragon. That does it for the first binder, guys. Three more to go. Sorry, before we move on, there are some cards that you might not see in the binder that uh, kind of go along with the cards, but I did have them off to the side, hoping I was, I was going to be remembering to show them all off at the right time. Definitely didn't, because I missed one of the most iconic cards, of course, Toon World, to go along with the Toon page. Uh, there's some stuff like that, again, that you may see slabbed up later in the video, so stay tuned for that, because it's only getting better from here. Moving on to the second season of Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, we start to get our game on right away. Some iconic cards. Yubel, Yubel, the Terror Incarnate Ultimate Rare, and a Secret Rare, Yubel, the Ultimate Nightmare from Phantom Darkness. All of these guys. Not really sure why they didn't print them all in Ultimate or... Well, n nonetheless, they still look awesome together. Can't go wrong. Should have started up here. This is actually where Yu-Gi-Oh! GX began. This card right here is the first one you see. Winged Karibo. Yugi, the original protagonist, hands this over to the second season protagonist, Jaden. So, one of the most iconic Yu-Gi-Oh! cards, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX cards right there, along with his level upgrade, Wing Karibo level 10. Look at that awesome card. Looks like a freaking dragon armor on him or something. But, we have something pretty cool right off the bat here. Brow Huntsman of Dark World. You might think, well, this is, this is a weird card. Why would you put this in right at the front? And it's only an unlimb. But, if you look at it, this is the blue misprint, Brow Huntsman of Dark World. So, usually, the whole side of his body right there that looks blue, that's supposed to be the same color as the other half of his body, but it was, yeah, it's a blue misprint where uh, basically just more blue ink got into the printer, and that is actually pretty common with GX cards. There's a lot of blue misprints, so you'll see some coming up in, the, in, the, uh, in this binder. But, of course, we cannot go on without addressing the elephants in the room. Uriah, Lord of the Searing Flame, Hammond, Lord of Striking Thunder, and Raviel, the Lord of Phantasms. Here we have our GX gods, the counterparts to the OG gods, and these guys right here, just absolutely incredible to find an ultimate rare. If you didn't notice though, these are unlimited. The only way you can get unlimited ultimate rares is actually from uh, retail European packs. So pretty cool little tidbit of information there. I actually have never really even seen another set of unlimited sacred beasts so i'm very very happy happy to have these guys one of my favorite pickups actually these guys i picked up from uh, my guy matt hagen so make sure you guys check him out if you don't know about him kin karibo i believe on instagram so very very happy to get those from him thank you very much my friend also want to show off another card here that goes along with wing karibo the card that you need to upgrade him to level 10 Transcendent Wings. Pretty cool card. There you need that little bad boy to uh, to upgrade him. Give him his wings. Speaking of spell cards that go along with their monster counterparts, Phantasmal Martyrs. The ultimate rare with all the awesome sacred beasts on it. Very, very cool. Gotta love that. I actually think that's a sacred beast token or something like that. A Raviel token or something. But you do have uh, Uriah and Hammond in the background there, so pretty cool. Here's another weird one. Starting it off with a Neos Wiseman. This guy's actually printed in Crossroads of Chaos, which is a Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds card, but it is, again, this is a, a fusion, basically, of uh, Elemental Hero Neos and Yubel, two of Jaden's, probably two of his most iconic cards, or his, his two of his ace monsters, uh, and yeah, it's a, I, again, I don't know why it was printed in Crossroads of Chaos, but it kind of reminds me of this card right here, Armor Tile, the Chaos Phantom, which is a fusion of all of the Sacred Beasts, and this guy was printed in Ancient Prophecy, which is, again, another 5D set. I will be go going through a lot of the slabs in, uh, in detail later in the video, so no worries about that. But continuing on with some more iconic GX cards, Ancient City, Rainbow Ruins, and Rare Value, Ultimate Rare. Of course, you know what those guys go along with. Crystal Beast Sapphire Pegasus, this one's kind of beat up unfortunately, and a Crystal Beast Topaz Tiger, first edition's from Force of the Breaker. Another iconic GX card, just couldn't really find a spot for Water Dragon, I uh, can't remember the name of the dude who uses the elements, but yeah, 
his card. <laughs> like I said, this binder really starts to kick things up, starts to heat things up right away. Ultimate Rare Arm Dragon Level 3, first edition from SOD, first edition Arm Dragon Level 7 from SOD, and Ultimate Rare Arm Dragon from Turbo Pack 6. Look at that beautiful card. This guy I picked up from Petty Party. Shout out to the fellow Canadian. He's got a bunch of awesome stuff for sale. Make sure you check him out. And I have to include, again, the ultra rare ugly cousin Arm Dragon Level 10 from Duelist Pack Chaz. Chaz, eat up! But of course, we can't talk GX without one of the most iconic GX baddies out there. Ancient Gear Golem. First edition for Ultimate Rare from the Lost Millennium to go along with his hound there, Ancient Gear Beast, and the Fusion Ultimate Ancient Gear Golem with the Ancient Gear Castle there, Crowder's cards there. He's an absolute joker of a character, but uh, has some awesome, awesome cards for sure. Some more GX cards I had to mention, of course. Master of Oz from SOD. Check that out. Freaking funny ass koala. And of course, Ojama King. Gotta keep him there, right close to the Chaz cards. I was actually thinking about putting him there with the arm dragons, but goes better here by himself. Almost deserves an entire page, entire binder for himself. We have some of Alexis's ultimate rares here. Pretty much the only ultis. Here we have something pretty cool. Harpy Queen ultimate rare from Force of the Breaker. Here is, of course, the uncensored, or the censored version. Looks a lot different than that alternate art version. And to go along with her, Harpy's Pet Baby Dragon. If you check these out, though, these are from EOJ Ultimate Rare First Ed. Look at this one. Looks a lot different than that one, right? That's because this one here is a misprint. That's an ink blotch misprint that uh, I've actually seen. I've seen it before. It's pretty common, so well, common for a misprint. But yeah, it's one of those uh, Ultimate Rare misprints with the extra blue ink, like I was mentioning with Brow. Pretty cool, awesome ultimate rares. Harpy Queen, I actually pulled myself on the channel. Make sure I'll leave a link to that if I can remember. All right, folks, we are continuing on with probably one of my top three favorite pages out of all of my binders, the Cyber Dragon page. An unreal page. We're just going to go ahead and start off up here with the Cyber Dark Dragons. Cyber Dark Edge, Cyber Dark Keel, Cyber Ogre, and now he's not really a Cyber Dark, but he kind of fits in there. And of course, Cyber Dark Horn. Let me zoom in a little bit up here because there's some cool little, cool little things that uh, happen with Cyber Dark Impact. As you can see, pretty common here, but the foil shift with Ultimate Rare. As you can see, the uh, foil is off on the stars there. You can really tell, and it's actually pushed down like right onto the first edition. That one's actually really, really shifted. Uh, but it's pretty common. As you can see with Cyber Dark Edge, there's a little bit of shift there on it. That one's actually pretty, pretty nice. Um, but yeah, pretty common, but it still is a very, very cool little little thing that that, that happened with Cyber Dark Impact. So there's the Cyber Dark Horn. Let's uh, get a little bit better angle on it there for you. See the foil shift up there on that guy too. So pretty cool and an awesome guy to center it all off cyber dark dragon ultimate rare huge shout out to my guy sunny thank you very much for this we actually traded some pretty big cards back in the day uh, i traded an ultimate rare euro print flame wingman from the lost millennium for that so pretty cool right there cyber ogre actually there is an ultimate rare euro print version Let's see if i can get a good shot of that Sorry, the glare on the camera is not really, it's not really that forgiving, especially for the ultimate rares. And there's the NA version. Moving on to the originals, the OG Cybers, Cyber Laser Dragon, along with Cyber Barrier Dragon and Power Bond, an unreal, unreal card for the GX anime. Had a lot of nostalgic value in the, uh, in the anime. It was definitely featured quite a bit with Zane and his brother. What's his brother's name right now? Can't remember. Anywho, that kid. But we have some awesome alties here from Cybernetic Revolution, Cyber and Dragon to top it all off in the middle there. Cyber Twin Dragon and Chimera Tech Over Dragon. Some amazing ultimate rares. And Cyber Phoenix, I don't really know if that counts as a Cyber Dragon ultimate rare, but threw it in there anyways. And a Proto Cyber Dragon. Pretty cool. As you can see, you might have been able to tell the main one isn't here. The original Cyber Dragon 
but don't worry. That just means it is slabbed up in something special. But can we just take a second, to, another second to appreciate the Cyber End Dragon? Look at that beautiful thing from Cybernetic Revolution. Beautiful. I believe it's a Euro print. Awesome. Alrighty, what do we have here? But as you can see, we are getting into our ultimate rare. Sorry, we're getting into some elemental hero stuff. Starting it off with elemental hero spell cards. Bubble Lucian being the only ultra rare, uh, but everything else, Bubble Shuffle, ultimate rare, Feather Shot, all equip cards for elemental heroes. But we also have Future Fusion, Beginning of the End, and Overload Fusion up here. I think the Fusion cards, they just kind of went with the Cyber Dragons. That's why I put them right in here. And beginning of the End, just an awesome ultimate rare that uh, I've just ha always had sticking around. Same with Card Trader, doesn't really go in here. And uh, Synthonia Alliance and Cunning of the Six Samurai, they're uh, obviously, they are not uh, elemental hero cards, but nonetheless, still awesome. And moving on to now to the actual elemental hero page, starting it off with Hero Flash, Neo Spores, and Neo Space. Skyscraper, always love that card. Fifth Hope and Skyscraper 2 Hero City. Fifth Hope is an awesome card. If you didn't know, the Elemental Heroes are actually based off of Marvel characters. Uh, I won't mention them all here, but have them standing in their little pose there. Really, really cool. And of course, Spark Blaster, Cyclone Boomerang, and the one that brings them all together, Miracle Fusion. I never picked this up in Ultimate Rare First Edition, only on Limited. Uh, that's one of the ones I regret quite a bit not picking up. So maybe, maybe in the future, I'll, uh, I'll be upgrading that. But you know what's coming. If you see the spell cards, you're going to see the traps and the monsters soon. A little bit of uh, secret, or sorry, yeah, secret and super rare spell cards. Super Polymerization, Wrath of Neos, and Burst Return. But the ultimate rare spell cards as well. Hero Metal, Hero Signal, and Hero Barrier. If you couldn't tell that they're based off of heroes, off of these cards, then uh, you might not be paying attention at all. So we also have uh, some cool ultimate rares that I recently pulled. Drastic Drop-Off, Cyber Summon Blaster. Again, kind of goes with Cyber Dragons. Figured, you know, fits in here with the other trap cards. And Acid Trap Hole. This is a secret rare. It comes from the special edition Shadow of Infinity. So that's a really cool card. I didn't actually didn't know I had that card for a while. It's just kind of hanging out there in the binder. But of course, you have your secret rare elemental heroes. Check out all these beauties. Let's get a nice shot of them. Starting it off with Elemental Hero Neos from the Collector's Tin. Elemental Hero Wild Heart. This is from a special edition. I actually have some of these for sale, I believe. Also have the Secret Rare version from Elemental Hero Collection 2. But we're getting ahead of ourselves because the Elemental Hero Collection 1 cards. Pretty cool. Elemental Hero Avian. Elemental Hero Burst Stanatrix. And Elemental Hero Bubble Man. Along with, again, Elemental Hero Collection 2. Elemental Hero Sparkman. Clayman and Elemental Hero Wild Art. Huge, huge shout out to Let's do, 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 do for a couple of these. I know I got a few of them off of him, and they're actually in really, really, really good shape. So thank you, my friend. If you ever want any amazing cards, old school cards in great condition, great prices, you, you've got to be on Instagram. You've got to be checking out guys like Let's do, 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 do. And uh, I know I didn't put enough Ds in there, man. I don't have enough time. <laughs> But uh, yeah, he, he, you, you, you'll find some amazing cards and some amazing deals on Instagram. So very, very happy to pick up the secret rare versions of these cards. But now we're getting into some big boys here, guys. We are getting into the ultimate rare elemental heroes. So I may have previously said that uh, that Cyber Dragon page was a top three out of my favorites. But coming up, I would say are probably top two. Before we get to that, though, we have some amazing cards to pair up with them starting it off here with some uh, honorary elemental heroes i call them because they aren't actually elemental heroes but i be i believe jaden used necro garden a lot right <laughs> roast me in the comments if i'm wrong about that but i do know that rottweiler is definitely an elemental hero uh honorary elemental hero because as you can see when he's destroyed by result, result of battle and sent to the graveyard add from your graveyard to your hand one card that includes Elemental Hero in its name and one Polymerization. So basically setting you up for another Fusion Summon, that little dog right there. But continuing on with some actual Elemental Heroes, we have Elemental Hero Bubble Man from Cybernetic Revolution, Neo Spatian Air Hummingbird, 
Not a, uh, again, not a really an ele elemental hero, but pairs up with them really nice. Uh, I guess I should have mentioned this is kind of like my Neospatian slash elemental hero page. But here we go with another awesome misprint. Check this guy out, Neospatian Grand Mole. One of my favorite cards, one of the ones that I use the most, uh, definitely, just because of its effect being so... Uh, so kind of versatile you could just kind of bounce any synchro monster or any uh fusion monster back to the extra deck really a pretty cool card but something that's extra cool about this one as you can see it has a huge foil shift and this isn't something that's very common with uh strike of neos the set like it, like it is with uh, cyber dark impact but even still the freaking shift on this is huge it come it covers half of the code there and the first edition and it comes all the way down to about half the way through the stars and the type right there so one of my favorite cards i think i picked that thing up for like 15 dollars canadian or something like that really really cheap one of my favorite favorite cards that that uh, old pickups that i that I, I still have elemental heroes again making an appearance right here elemental hero captain gold elemental hero blade edge from elemental energy and force of the breaker respectively we got Elemental Hero Neos Alias. He's a mini Elemental Hero Neos. And some more Neos Patients. Elemental, sorry, ne Elemental Hero. Neos Patient Flare Scarab. And Neos Patient Dark Panther. Some awesome, awesome cards. Along with Neos Patient Aqua Dolphin. This is one of the guys that I am so, I regret selling some of these. I think I had one more and I sold it for about like $70, like something three, four years ago like that. And uh, I ended up picking up a huge profit on it. I think I only paid about $15 for it, but then I realized how rare and how sought after it was when it hit like $200 for a near mint copy. So check this out. I hope you guys are ready. This is something really cool. I'm gonna uh, set up the camera for it so we can get a nice reveal going. Pretty proud of this next page. As you can see, set up here. We got Neospatient, Air Hummingbird, Grand Mole, Flare Scarab, Dark Panther, and Aqua Dolphin. And will you look at this? Isn't that the most satisfying thing you've ever seen there? Having all of their fusion counterparts all laid out here with the rest of the Unreal Elemental Hero Ultimate Rares. Let's make sure we can see them all in their beautiful glory. There we have it, guys. Elemental Hero page. This is definitely my top two favorite page in the binder. Just look how unreal that is. Yes, those are all first edition, ultimate rare elemental heroes. These are some of the first biggest cards that I picked up. Started spending big money on these just because I, re I realized how hard they were to come by and just because of how iconic they are, I had to pick them up. Just unreal, absolutely unreal. G Again, GX, I definitely started to um, I step up my game and started to pay a little bit more money for cards because I didn't want to miss out on them. Some of these iconic cards that, uh, yeah, I would definitely still watch the GX anime when it first came out. So some of these iconic cards just mean so much to me that I had to pick them up. And the prices that I got some of them for, like Gold Stamp Elemental Hero Flame Wingman here for $60, Elemental Hero Air Neos for $75 Canadian, I got two. Elemental Hero, Shining Phoenix Enforces, one unlimited that I think I ended up selling, and this one for about $100. These are some of the biggest deals that I've ever had, and this is a huge reason why I kept investing in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I just realized how much I hit the jackpot on these guys. So absolutely love them. We're going to give them all the time they deserve, starting off with the OG Elemental Hero Flame Wingman. Check this out from The Lost Millennium. Elemental Hero Flame Wingman is the first card that, or the fus first fusion monster that Jaden summoned in uh, in the anime. So a very, very nostalgic card. This one is, again, as you can see, a gold print. And uh, if you didn't know what I'm saying by that, the stamp right here for all Yu-Gi-Oh cards is gold. For this card, and there's a few others, I think there was seven or eight total. Maybe I'm overshooting that, but... There was uh, a dispute between the company that owned Yu-Gi-Oh, Konami, and uh, the company that was distributing their cards, Upper Deck Entertainment. They had a little dispute where they ended up printing basically some Upper Deck Entertainment cards without the permission of Konami, and they ended up getting uh, losing their license to print Yu-Gi-Oh cards after that. So it was a huge controversy, but basically the fake Upper Deck ones, they, they'll call them the fake, uh, is 
it has a silver stamp and those are not basically official Konami cards. Those are not considered officially sanctioned cards. That is a little backstory behind it. But continuing on, we have an Elemental Hero Thunder Giant again. This one from the Lost Millennium. Look at that. As you can tell, there is a huge difference between the Ultimate Rare foils here. That's because this one right here is a Euro print. It has that foil that pops off a lot more. The stars, as you can see with the stars, they, they, they're almost like a lot more pronounced. The ultimate rare foiling for these new, uh, for um, uh, GX cards is absolutely unreal for the difference between Europrint and North American. You'll see I have a couple here that are Europrint and I have some others that are North American of the same card. Very good example of uh, the change between the two, the two artworks. So continuing on here, we have Elemental Hero Glonios along with Elemental Hero Neos and Grand Neos. These guys all from Storm, sorry, Storm of Ragnarok. I always mix these two sets up. Strike of Neos. This set, very nostalgic to me because uh, I ended up picking up a ton of these blister packs and uh, just loose first edition packs at a local shop. They were just one of my first ever finds. I still have the blister packs actually with me. And uh, yeah, I'm very, very happy to uh, found the, that set. So the awesome Strike of Neos Elemental Heroes there, but we can't forget about Elemental Hero Rampart Blaster. We can't leave him off the list there with the other Elemental Energy ones. I tried to kind of set them up, put all the all the ones in the same set together, but I also wanted to set them up so I had the Neospatians actually lined up with them. But here we go, Elemental Hero Rampart Blaster, Ultimate Rare from Elemental Energy, one of the most insane sets. It's like pretty much the Elemental Hero set, it has Elemental Hero Shining Flare Wingman on it, and awesome cards in it like this. Elemental Hero Tempest, Ultimate Rare, one of the more sought after cards in, in the Elemental Hero set, that's for sure. Elemental Hero Wild Edge, and as you can see, if you can't tell, that guy actually here guess in the comments what do you think is that a north american print or is that a euro print i've already given you the information there so let me know what do you think that one is right there but of course the cover card elemental hero shining flare wingman this guy he has a little ding up there a lot of these cards i would say are either in like psa 7 to eight condition so there's there might be some nines in there but for the most part i want them in the binder just because they're they look amazing in here. Like if they're all slabbed up and they have sixes on them or whatever, it might not be, or sixes or sevens, it might not be as appealing as they are right here. This is just absolutely unreal. Have these guys in here. If they were um, kind of nine-able, I would say, I would probably grade them. Like I said, you might have to stay tuned and you might find some later on. But this guy right here, again, Elemental Hero Shining Flare Wingman, that guy shot up to about like $500 right away. And uh, thankfully was able to get it for about 150 Canadian. Very, very happy. A lot of these cards, believe it or not, actually pretty much where, where all you guys got your cards to, got them from a local old Asian dude who's been collecting forever, and uh, a lot of them from him. Even more uh, Elemental Heroes from uh, a local dude, Dan. Make sure you guys check him out. I'll leave a link to his shop. He owns, actually owns a shop, and uh, yeah, it's up in Barry. Continuing on now, though, we have the power of the Duelist Ultimate Rares, Elemental Hero Flare Neos, Elemental Hero Dark Neos, and Elemental Hero Aqua Neos. The Flare Neos actually got uh, this upgraded copy from... This was actually my first purchase ever on Instagram. It was from a dude named Yu-Gi-Oh! Australia. Maybe that's not his name now. I can't remember his name, but he's from Australia. Was very happy that this card came in uh, good condition and came quick and very quick and smooth for my first transaction. But Elemental Hero Dark Neos, of course, an unreal card, the cover card for Power of the Duelist and Elemental Hero Aqua Neos. This guy is probably still really undervalued. It's been undervalued for quite some time. But moving on, we have Tactical Evolutions, Elemental Hero Dark Bright, an unreal fusion of Elemental Hero Sparkman and Necro Shade. And here I have a not an Elemental Hero, but he I think he's an auto, honorary Elemental Hero because he's UFO Roid Fighter, which is a fusion of UFO Roid and one warrior type. But uh, in the anime, he actually fuses with Elemental Hero Tempest up there. You see him just hanging out on that little UFO. Pretty cool card, had to throw that in there. Along with uh, the last Elemental Hero printed all the way at the end of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. Check this out, Elemental Hero Neos Knight. And that's because this guy was actually a fusion of, I believe, Elemental Hero Neos and Dark Magician? 
I'm not mistaken, so correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Maybe it's Buster Blade or something like that. Anyways, it's a fusion of Jaden and Yugi's card, so pretty cool card. Definitely have to throw them in there. As you can see, has the ultimate rare foiling on the outside of it. So it's, uh, yeah, as you can tell, it's a, it's a newer card. But here we go, check this out, guys. We're not done with the Elemental Heroes. So, sorry, I said that was the last Elemental Hero printed. It was not. There was Elemental Hero Nova Master all the way in Generations Force. This guy is printed in Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel, the first pack of Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel, but still an unreal card. I remember when this guy first came out, everybody was loving him. Everybody needed to get their Elemental Hero Nova Master. And this one is one that I pulled, I believe, out of a box. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I almost missed EOJ. That is unreal. How, would, how can I do that? Because I actually opened a box of European EOJs, and you'll be able to see in that box that you're able to get super rares and ultra rares as ultimates. So I was very happy to pull, actually, Elemental Hero Wild Wingman, which you'll see later in the video. It got graded a 10, spoiler alert. But of course, you have the cover card, Elemental Hero Shining Phoenix Enforcer and Elemental Hero Phoenix Enforcer, the awesome cards that were printed in Enemy of Justice. Again, opened one of those boxes. A really, really cool set. I actually have a first edition box still. So uh, who knows? Maybe maybe open it later on the channel. Spoiler alert for uh, the upcoming Sealed Collection video, which will also be unreal. Now we can move on to the other elemental heroes here. Again, we have some doubles going on, and I'll show you all about those in just a minute because there was technically these guys, evil heroes. These guys were actually uh, the evil. There was a, there was a time when uh, the protagonist, Jaden, of the second series, he kind of went evil here. And these are the kind of evil counterparts of his fusion. So very cool. You have evil hero Inferno Wing and evil hero Lightning Golem. And very cool because these came in glass. One of my favorite sets, Gladiator's Assault. Very cool set uh, with some of my favorite pulls. Ever. Something really cool about Evil Hero Inferno Wing, it actually has uh, this a couple of these misprints up here in the uh, stars. It has the ink misprint, and along the side here, it has that misprint. And as you can see, I have it on the same card, on the same card, on the double, exactly the same. So very common misprint, it looks like. But some honorable mentions to some secret original Elemental Heroes. Again, Elemental Hero Gaia printed in Ancient Prophecy, 5Ds pack. You have Elemental Hero Plasma Vice, so the uh, secret rare from Gladiator's Assault, and of course, Elemental Hero Magma Neos. But we're going to backtrack here to show off some of these doubles, because there's a, there's a reason why I have some of these doubles. This Elemental Hero Thunder Giant is an ultimate rare European version, because you can see the pop there. But this Elemental Hero Wild Edge is... A North American version. You can barely see the pop. It almost looks like it's an ultra rare. So along with that, we have, check this out. This is actually probably one of my prized cards, Elemental Hero Flame Wingman. And as you notice, this is actually an ultimate rare Euro print gold stamp. So the silver stamp actually looks like kind of like an imitation European print. So it's very, very cool, very hard to get this Elemental Hero Flame Wingman in Ultimate Rare North American print as well as European print. So actually, again, traded one of those two sunny hobbies, but thankfully was able to still get one, keep one for myself. But just look at this difference here. I'm going to show you the difference, guys. So look at Elemental Hero Flame Wingman on this page, and then look at him on this page. Look at the difference that looks like a completely different card. The ultimate rare is flat. And as you can see here with Elemental Hero Thunder Giant, I actually don't know if I have two ultimate rare European prints of that. Actually looking at them in the binder right now, it looks like I do. But another one where I have that ultimate rare European comparison, that Elemental Hero Wild Edge I was talking about. As you can see, look at this thing right here on that page. And now... Look at it on this page. It is a completely different card. That is the difference between ultimate rares from Europe and North America. These ones, the flatter ones being the North American ones and the ones with the pop being no, uh, European print. All right, guys, that does it for the elemental heroes. Whew. At least the ultimate rares. 
because we have some awesome ones coming up in the future. Stay tuned for that if you know what I'm talking about. It's going to get spooky, but we are we're going to move on to the the Elemental Hero uh lookalikes or the Elemental Hero uh posers, Destiny Heroes. Destiny Hero Double Dude, Destiny Hero Dogma, Destiny Hero Dasher, another Diamond Dude, and Evil Hero Malicious Edge. I just have to throw Malicious Edge in here just because, I don't know, I just feel like he doesn't go with the Elemental Heroes, so I just have to throw him in here. <laughs> but I also have Destiny, Destiny Hero Plasma, and uh, yeah, that's from a collector's tin. So along with the spell cards, of course, you have Dark City, Skyscraper is basically counterpart, Cyclone Blade, D time and D chain. But you may have noticed, oh, well, can't forget Destiny and Dragoon, the fusion of that. This guy right here, Ultimate Rare Diamond Dude, actually pulled myself. So it was really, really cool to pull that. But you may have noticed we're actually missing the big boy. And that's because he is slabbed up the big boy elemental, sorry, elemental hero, Destiny Hero Dreadmaster. And this guy's actually in a PSA 9. Very, very cool. Uh, one of the first cards that uh, I graded, and yeah, very, very happy with this grade.